Well, I'm now speaking to owner of the Winnowak kennel name and uh, had a rather successful day in the boxer ring, winning a first CC. Congratulations. Right, thank you. Um, now, tell us a bit about the breed. How did you first get involved? Uh, I first got involved in the breed. It was a strange story in a way in that my mum and dad have never ever wanted a dog mm. at all. Uh, and of course I always did, but no matter how much I asked, there was no way that was going to happen. And so cycling to uh, the school I was at at the time, and the route used to take me past a little cream-coloured bungalow, uh, and the cream-coloured bungalow was owned by Marion and Ivor Ward-Davis, who clearly right. had the, yes. the Winnowood Kennel Lane since 1952, I think they founded it and just started helping out and it kind of went from there. Um, and you, you obviously started out wanting one as a pet. Surely does that boil down to character? Yeah, I know we all fall in love with the breeds that we own, but you know, from a boxer point of view, they are the, they're, they're the archetypal family dog. Yeah. You know, they are so adaptable. What I always say to people is they're just always up for everything, really are, full of energy. And I, I love about a boxer is they really do have a comparatively short old age. You've got a boxer and it's 10 years old and it's still acting like a two year old. <laughs> uh, they, they really are just fantastic. And after all, Di Johnson at her audience with did say all the best people own boxers. Ah, indeed, indeed. <laughs> and indeed, Di did herself. Exactly. Always says it's her favourite breed. And you I'm, can't, I'm argue with, sure can't argue with Di. No. Um, so tell us a bit more about the, the temperament of the breed. The history of the boxer was they are a, they are a guarding breed. In the right. original standard it talks about being distrustful of strangers right. and I mean really they should be but the point about a boxer is that when they've got to know you and they know that you're a friend mm. they are just the most giving and playful dogs you could imagine but they know that their family are the special ones right <laughs> and if they're introduced to somebody else they'll be quite happy and they'll be out going as long as their masters mm. approve if you like but actually there's sort of something quite nice about a dog that you own if, if you feel like you're extra special. <laughs> and of course they do have this really playful nature so they are popular as pets. Yes. Is there advice that you give based on a boxer to potential pet owners? Yes. What, look, what we always say around the boxer is you need to be number one in the household. Yeah. Because if you're not what you'll find is, and it's true of a lot of these uh, the, 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 the guarding working breeds, is you find the dog ultimately becomes a bit dominant. Right. So they've got to know their limits and as long as they do, as long as you're firm, fair but kind, uh, they'll give you years and years of enjoyment. And you spoke there about their guarding yeah. background. Tell us about how the, the breed was developed. Yeah, I mean, the breed was, I mean, ultimately, I mean, I know people talk about boxers being a working breed. It's actually quite hard to work out what, what job boxers originally were bred to do. Right. They were the result of mating an old English bulldog called right. Tom the Bulldog. Uh, to a French bull mastiff type bitch, uh, and that resulted in the first boxer in 1895. Uh, and since then, they, because of their adaptable nature, they've been used for very many different things. And when judging, a lot of attention is paid to a boxer's head. Yeah. Tell us about what what the, the archetypal head should look like. Okay, I'm glad you asked me that question because. <laughs> The reality is the boxer isn't a head breed. I, will, right. I always say, at any seminar I give, if you look at what's asked for under the breed standard, it talks about looking at the general appearance first and you know, that overall view you get from yeah. across the ring. That's the first thing to consider. You then come down, and it does say in there, special attention should be given to the head. You know, people get, then get a bit fixated on it. So I think we've just got to keep that, that thing in balance. Is the head important? Of course it is. Are they a head breed? I'd always argue they're not. Now, when you're looking at a boxer head, what you want to see is you want to see that lovely balance between muzzle and skull. Mm. And you also want to see a lovely, lo it makes a big difference on a boxer head. You want a very obvious stop and you want a mm. lovely rise of skull. So up between the eyes, you want that to be a decent rise of skull. Ultimately, the boxer head should be very clean. It should have lovely, lovely clean cheeks and it should have wrinkle on the head, but the wrinkle should only arise when the dog's alert. Right. But again, back to it, don't, let's not obsess about the head. It's one part of the breed. You can't kick a good head around the ring. The soundness of body, uh, the soundness of movement in a working dog is so important. And you say about soundness there, what do you expect overall in a boxer? The boxer is a medium-sized square breed of dog. Those are some of the first words in the standard, and you want balanced angulation of front and back. If you kind of ignore the head completely, they're actually a very straightforward breed of dog to judge. Yeah. Um, and I remember a while ago speaking to Andrew Brace, yep. um, who was a big fan of one of Winnowick's most successful dogs of all time, Max, yeah. an incredible 74. 74 cc's. What made him such a good example? I mean, back to what I was saying earlier, this whole idea of medium size and square, Max was a medium size square boxer, absolutely full of breed type, a totally typical head, eyes that kind of spoke to you. 
But if we're being absolutely honest, the reality about that dog is he just had, between his ears, <laughs> he had show personality. You took Max into the big ring, he just went up a notch. Yeah. He just loved it. He was made to show. And, and you say when he went into the big ring, he, he just yep. wanted to show a couple of crafts. Yep. Group wins is, is phenomenal. Indeed. T tell us what else he's, he's won. Well, he's the top winning boxer of all time. A couple of all breed best in shows. 21 group wins, which we're really proud of. Yeah. Uh, he's kind of done it all. And I mean, almost even as important as that mm. is he was the top boxer sire last year. He's the top boxer sire this year. You know, his son was best of breed at Crufts this year for us. <laughs> and now this year we've won the Dog CC with a very young dog who is a grandson of Max's, and you know, so the cycle goes on. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. No worries. Um, and best of luck for your, the dog that won a first CC today. That's Hope great. we see him in the group ring a little, a little late. We will do. Cheers, thank Simon. You. Thank you.